driving. This is unsafe. <laughs> no. Collingwood Flea Market in Wall Township, New Jersey. Um, it's a little trek up the parkway. We visited this spot before, but the footage just wasn't like up to par. It was like five degrees outside. Yeah, it was so freaking cold. It was early on in season one that we yeah, did it. It just, it never, you know, it never became of anything. And we wanted to give this spot the webisode that it deserves because it's truly an awesome little hidden booth in there. Um, they have an outside section, which is apparently one of Robert Bruce's favorite spots to go to in the wee hours of the morning. We are not getting there at the wee hours of the morning. It's, I think it's like, what, 12? Yeah, so we're going to go and... Yeah, it's like 12.30. We're going to check out the outside, yeah. see what they have to offer, and kind of get the, the pickings left over. Yeah, but, I mean, we love that spot inside. Darren, uh... The Comic Crypt. The Comic Crypt, yeah, that's what it's called inside. Darren is an awesome kid. He's got so much cool stuff. And you know what's awesome, though? Is that he's constantly getting new things inside and updating his social media. So he has a Instagram account. Um, it's called the Comic Crypt at Collingwood, and it's at Collingwood Comics on Instagram. And he constantly updates with all of the cool stuff he gets. He lets you know, like, what it is and what date it's from and... If you remember on our social media not long ago, actually it was a little a little while ago, we posted a picture of a friend of ours who found a Incredible Hulk number one. Oh, that was him. Outside at Collingwood. That was Darren. That was him. Yeah, this guy, him. he's close to our age, but man, he has got the hunting prowess of someone twice his age. No. All I know is that he got a really good deal on it and then immediately he started getting exorbitant offers for the books. I mean, oh it's, really? It's a it's a it's a it's a it's an incredible Hulk number one. Yeah. So it's you know, that right there is a holy grail of a book. We're excited to go back. We haven't been to Collingwood in quite a long time. Yeah, it's been and a you know, it's now the fall, the weather is turning, it's not eight billion degrees outside. It's also not four degrees outside. Right, so we got a nice medium. We're gonna hit the outside of Collingwood, we're gonna trek around. We might have to use our phones to record in the outside area yeah, of Collingwood. Some people are weird if because you go to their booth with like a camera. The natives get kind of restless and some of them are very um Territorial. Jumpy and territorial. So we may leave the pro camera in the car, record that part with our phones, and then record the inside part with Darren because we have a great rapport with Darren and he always welcomes us. And I feel really bad that we never aired that first episode that we did on the place. But redemption right. is yours. This is redemption because we didn't feel that the footage that we got was... Didn't do it any justice. Correct. Just didn't. So we're going to see what he got. We are on the hunt. It is a Sunday fun day, a good old classic comic Sunday trip Sunday fun day. Fun day. Feels kind of good to get back into the swing of things. And um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to check back with you on another time. Latris on the Minge. Come at me, bro. I, what? That doesn't smell. I don't think it will. What type of 32 year old man just carries comic book bags in his car on the fly? Paul Brown. I'm a former scout, always be prepared. Oh, it smells a little bit. Like 
loud okay. and clear. Yep. Roger that. Did some damage outside. Yeah, some cool boost stuff. Some I gotta cool get boost. here early though, because the day looks picked clean. Right. Yeah, we gotta learn to actually get up early. So now we're gonna head uh, inside to Comic Crypt. Comic Crypt.
set. Six. What's your favorite part about doing this whole crazy, living this whole crazy life? Um, my favorite part is just that, like, this is a great way to spend my weekends. You know, like, even on a bad weekend, if it rains outside, no one comes in. I'm still surrounded by comic books, wrestling toys, and records all the time. So I just get to, like, do all the cool stuff that I really enjoy being around anyway, and now I get paid a little bit to do it. So... The whole thing is pretty great. As a hunter yourself, do you have any tips for anyone who's possibly getting into it, say, with, like, you know, flea markets and things like yeah. that? Yeah. Um, be nice. Like, be nice and don't lie to people about stuff either, you know? Like, I'm pretty... I try to be very honest with people and tell them, I'll give you this much for something. Yes, you know, I know it's worth more, but I have to be able to make money too, you know? I don't try to tell people oh, this is garbage, it's only worth a dollar, and then I come in and sell it for a hundred dollars, you know? Like, I'm not going to give them ninety dollars for it either, because then I don't make any money. I try to be nice, and especially, you deal with the same sellers all the time at the flea market. There's a lot of people outside, and they're the same people every week. you got to be honest with them, and I'll tell them, look, you're going to get more money selling this out here for a dollar or two than I would make it on the inside. So, like, you know, you take it, and you make the money, and I'll make the money next time. That's what I try to do. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. Jose. Oh, it's so hot. <sighs> I farted again. It was okay because we have the flowers in the car to combat the yeah. smell of my fart. It's gonna smell like marigold farts. And poop. Collingwood Farmers Market. This is a great spot. Like I said, you got to get there early if you're gonna really like prowl the outside section because they start packing up. You know. By the time we get here, they're packing. They're up. getting ready to leave. The fact that we get there late, we do sometimes get the cool leftovers. Yeah, we get the leftovers. The people who are just like, all right, yeah, take you know whatever. Just give us this one. I found this Action Masters uh, die cast set. Of Star Wars. These came out in 1994. This was right around when the movie was being redone, right? Mm -hmm. These are heavy. Yeah, they're heavy. They're die cast the die metal. Cast. These are, they're just cool, and I've never seen this set before. The box? So the guy was here. Yeah, he wanted to get rid of it. So, so like, what, 20 bucks for that? I think it was 15. 15, yeah. 15 yeah. bucks for that. Beetlejuice! Beetlejuice Found another store. Beetlejuice toy. This is not part of the original line. This is part of the, Maybe oh, hey, it's the, it's the late 80s, early 90s. We're just going to make a bunch of characters that don't actually exist and, and put here. them in an action figure and you're going to shut up and buy them. Yeah. Five bucks. Uh, then the guy had the set of the... Um, They're in the trunk. The Bendoms. Star Wars Bendoms. 1993. I believe the company is Just Toys. This is technically the complete set of the Bendoms, all three. They may, they sell them individually on cards, but um, we like the the collector set, so it's kind of cool that those were in there. The only thing that is of concern is that the original tape is is coming off. Kind but of that's okay. They're definitely all unopened. The boxes are in, good, again, pretty good shape. surprisingly good shape. So this will look great in our Star Wars room. Like we were saying before, on the inside is a little comic shop called The Comic Crypt. Darren's in there, and um, he always usually has some pretty good sales going on. Like, 
you know, a couple bucks off back issues or 50 half cent, off back issues you know, or 50 cent comics. Like he's got some pretty good deals in there. And then he's got, you know, the wall of the new arrivals. The part that I like the most is that he's got some of the horror magazines and the rock and roll magazines from like, like the vintage magazines. He was doing 50% off all wrestling magazines as well as back issue comics to add to the collection. He gave us a very good deal on some old WWF magazines and the WCW magazines. These, of course, will go in the fortress of Politude. Of Politude. Then we just got some comic books, you know, a few 50, back issues here and there. 50% off the back issues. Can't really complain. It's got a nice nope. stack of books. Marvel Team Up Spider Man and Daredevil, number 141. That's a good book. Got that for $10 because it's 50% off. And then we actually just stocked up on a bunch of Avengers, a lot of Avengers, that ended up being either a dollar or a dollar fifty. Per issue, TV Guide. Just it's got a whole. You know, it's got a whole Hogan thing on it. Uh, so in the case, like right where you check out, where he's got his register and stuff. Yeah. So we had he had all six of the Happy Tree Friends vinyls. This series to me was just so freaking funny because it's a bunch of like cute little animals, but like they turn into like these crazy murderous cartoons. It's a really funny series. If you like that kind of humor from South Park with the furry friends where like they're the nice animals in the woods and then they turn out to be like satanic cannibals. If you like that kind of stuff, uh, I definitely recommend checking out this series because it's really freaking funny. Here's what I love about the comic crypt. Darren. That's what I love about the comic crypt. Darren is one of those people that knows exactly what he has. And what it's Let, worth. Let's, let's not, you know, split hairs here. Down to brass tacks, he knows what he has. The p part that I love about Darren is that he is always willing to give someone a deal. If he sees that you like something, if especially if you're a regular, and if you're nice, you're a good person, he's going to help you out. Granted, he gets some good stuff. We passed up a New Teen Titans number two for a second time. It's just it, Star I, Wars number one. Star first Wars Poison number Ivy. one. That yep. was cool too. We found the first Poison Ivy as well. There was. He had some pretty <laughs> darn good books. We're not looking to spend forty, fifty dollars per issue of a comic book. I love the comic crypt because Darren is a solid dude. He's in it for the right reasons, and he himself is also a collector. Yes, he's a seller, but it seems like more so he's a collector. Darren, you're a good I dude. I love your shop. Comic sure. Crypt. This episode here should have aired a long time ago. We weren't happy with the footage, yeah. and I'm glad that we came back. We gave it some, uh, some solid footage. We, we put in what it needed, for sure. It's, we just fucking lost my words. We put, we made a thing. We did a. With video. Oh, that was cute. That was like a throwback suffering. season one derp. I, I love it. I was suffering for my words. I gotta say, I almost kind of miss those derps from season one. Because. Autobots. Roll out. I don't know about this whole sexy Optimus Prime thing that you're doing. I do. Okay. <laughs>